Church of 14781 Sperry Road in Newberry, Ohio. Zip code 44065. I am Pastor Ernie Sanders, and this is Doers of the Word Baptist Church, and you're listening to us this morning on the Liberty Works Radio Network. That is the Eagle 104.3 FM in Tampa and Ocala. And the title of the message this morning is The Moral Mandate to Vote Part 2. The Moral Mandate to Vote Part 2. And we start this morning in Numbers chapter 32. That's Numbers chapter 32, verses 20 through 23. And Moses said unto them, If you will do this thing, if you will go armed before the Lord to war, and will go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord until he hath driven out his enemies from before him. And the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterwards you shall return and be guiltless before the Lord and before Israel. And this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you up. The last part of that is one of the signs that we hold at the abortion. And they'll be sure your sin will find you out. And uh, that is not received too well from the, those women that are coming in there. I guarantee you that. <coughs> but anyhow, what is he telling us here in this message? What he says, uh, we need to arm ourselves. And that means mentally. That means spiritually. And that means physically. We need to be armed in every way. Amen. We have a war coming, folks, our way. My friend, Don Boyce, who happens to be one of the UBF pastors, an author, he's written many books, uh, he made this newsletter here, at least with news with views, get ready for a major terrorist disaster. And in here, basically, he brings to attention what most of us already know, what's coming this way. But some of the hardships that's going to be coming with that, that we really need to be uh, aware of and prepared for. He's telling us here in this passage of Scripture, we need to make sure that God's enemies are our enemies. Folks, listen, we are to be in the world, but not of the world. Amen. And God's Word, the Bible, makes it very, very clear that any of us and all of us uh, that are friends with the world, whoever is a friend of the world is the enemy of God. That's right. And uh, we are not to be friends with this world. Nope. And if you're truly saved, you're a Christian, let me tell you, the world should know it. Yeah. And I can, I can say that, uh, and probably say, I don't want to use the word probably, but blessedly say, the world does not love me. And I don't want them to love me in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Jan Porter, who was one of our speakers yesterday, has now made, she's number two in the entire country, right behind Phyllis Shafley, on the feminist hate list. She is the number two woman they call the watch list on the, the feminist hate list uh, to hate, to make sure uh, they do not want her in any high office anywhere. And uh, so, but I, I made the top of the list some years ago in Ohio. I was the number one guy on the ACLU hit list who uh, they did, did not like. Praise the Lord. And then, uh, we need to restore America back to the way she was in the beginning so that we can stand guiltless before God. Well, folks, a failure to do so would be a sin of omission. And put it this way, let me rephrase that. It's not the failure to restore America would be a sin. It's, it's not to try. Exactly. We have our marching orders from Genesis to Revelation. God's Word in the Bible makes it very clear that resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. Now, there are those that, like so many before them, believe that it's too late. It's just too late to repent. Uh, you see, they've developed what they believe to be an exact historical uh, timeline that not even God himself uh, can break. And uh, Mark 10, 27 says very, very clearly that with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. See, we don't have to worry about winning. It's not our job. If you've ever been in the military, all you guys that have been in the military, 
You know, when you receive an order, uh, your job is to carry out the order. The Lord Jesus says, He will bring the victory. Now, folks, He never fails. He never fails, okay? And uh, despite what the Pope said about Him failing at Calvary, no, He did not fail at Calvary, okay? So, anyhow, this passage here makes it very, very clear, folks, that uh, what we're to do, it lays it out. There's no stuttering in that passage of Scripture at all, is there? Now, for those that, that think that, well, it's too late and it can't be turned back, turn to 2 Chronicles 7.12. See, God gives you some instructions here, and if you abide by it, and starting in 2 Chronicles 7, starting with verse 12, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. By the way, God is immutable. And He in His own word says, He is unchanging. He is the same today, tomorrow, and forever. And He deals with America just as He dealt with Israel. The only two nations that were formed, nations under God, is Israel and America. And He deals with us in the same capacity. Now the difference is Israel is unrepentant, mm -hmm. and the, the church is repentant. But that will change. That's going to change. <clears throat> you know, it's very, very clear. And in one day, all of Israel will be saved in one hour. Amen? Amen. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. I shut up heaven that there be no rain. Or if I command the locust to devour the land, or if I send pestilence upon my people. In other words, he's making a point. So what if I do? God has the perfect right to do whatever he wants. You see, it goes this way. God owes us nothing. Not a thing at all. And if every man, woman, and child on this earth was to suddenly disappear, it wouldn't affect God in the least. Amen. He was here long before we were, before he created us. Folks. And with the exception of those that are saved, he'll be here long after all the others are gone. Mm -hmm. In fact, his word, everything that was spoken into existence, heaven and earth will pass, but God's word will stand forever. It always has and it always will. Amen. And he goes on to say, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now, God would do that. He would do that if America would repent. He would do that. You've got his word on it. Do I think America's going to repent? No. But you know what, folks? My job is to, is to do and preach. And your job, too. Your job, you've got called this great commission, is, is to strive for revival, for repentance in America. Amen. Okay. And leave leave that up to God, whether He decides to do it or not. That's, That's right. not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to obey God. Mm -hmm. From Genesis to Revelation, what? Resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. The one thing God demands over you say, well, why do you keep telling us that? That's true. I'm required to keep telling you that and to keep reminding you that. Amen. Word upon word, precept upon precept. Word upon word, precept upon precept. What does Scripture say? So many have become dull of hearing. Dull of hearing! They're not paying attention. That's why this article here by Don is really a good article that people would take it and read it because it's coming this way, but the vast majority of people are not going to be prepared. The vast majority are going to be totally unprepared. And they're going to regret that greatly. Now my eyes shall be open and mine ears attend to the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, and my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, thou shalt observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom, according as I have committed with David. The Father saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler, to be ruler in Israel. And that would apply to America too, a godly man. 
But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by their roots out of my land that I have given them. And this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight, and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. Listen, God gave this land, folks, He gave this land to share with those who called upon his name, the founding fathers, those in the pilgrims that came here, they were looking, they were coming here, for the main reason was to be able to worship God freely and not be under the 501c3 of the Church of England. And that's why so many people came from all over the world to this country. God gave us this land as a free land. And he gave us a republic form of government, like Ben Franklin said, if you could keep it. But they also told you what? It would take eternal vigilance and the people in America have grown fat and they've, they've become dull-eyed. It's always, it's not my responsibility. This, this being politically active stuff, that's not my responsibility. I'm not called to do that. Then what are you called for? God's Word, the Bible says you are. And this idea here things that they're saying is, well, now, pastor, haven't you heard them prissy preachers in, in the pulpits with their pink bloomers on telling people all the time that you've got to separate your religion from your politics. But somebody forgot to tell that to the Lord Jesus because his politics and his religion, his faith, his beliefs were totally inseparable. They were one of the same. In fact, starting back with Noah, every prophet, every priest, Every man and woman of God, their politics and their religion were one of the same. Amen. These people that tell you, well, personally, I'm opposed. I would personally never have an abortion. But I won't oppose my views on others. So what that person is telling you is this. I personally uh, wouldn't murder somebody, but... I certainly wouldn't try to keep you from murdering somebody. <laughs> okay? And I would say to that person, personally, you're disgusting. And you need to repent of that. Because you're a hypocrite. And that's what Scripture says. That's what I would tell them. And it would be fun, too, because their eyes would get real big. Like this. They wouldn't expect that. You see, what happens is they parrot these things over and over, most people just look at them, don't say anything, there's no response. And I actually like dealing with a lot of these people when you say things that gets their attention just to see the expression on their face. I mean, it's a, you know, God, God has a real sense of humor. Amen. And I find that playing out all the time in the ministry. What kind of people are you to, to vote for? How do, how, do, how do we know who to vote for, who to support? First of all, you are to vote. You are to vote. And you are to support. And by the way, out there, you see all those signs right out there outside uh, for Matt Lynch. Make sure that some of you, those of you that are in Ashtabula, Lake, Geauga, Portage, or, or part of Trumbull County, grab one and take one home with you. Also, part of Cuyahoga County, John. I'm not sure which part, but part of Kyle. But anyhow, how do you how do you know to vote for? Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 17. God spelled it out. God spelled it out for us very clearly. And in Deuteronomy chapter 17, starting with verse 14, when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell where therein, and shall say, I, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Thou shalt any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One. One from among the brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. In other words, we're not to, to vote for anyone that's not a Christian. We're, we're to promote people that are Christian. Amen. Amen? Amen. Now, you say, well, I know that fellow says he's Christians. What about all these people that claim to be Christians? We sent them to Washington. We found out in a hurry they were. Well, you see, it's not our job to read their heart. We can't. 
we can look at the fruits, you know, what they've done in the past, the fruits they bear, and, you know, you have to, you know, I have people who come to me and they, may, and they want to be baptized. They want to be baptized. And uh, so I'll, you know, I'll sit down and we'll discuss what baptism is. Find out, number one, do they understand what baptism is? What does it mean to be, why do you want to be baptized? What does it mean? Well, those that understand and have a profession of faith, first thing you got to ask them, when were you saved? Now, you might say, well, you know, I just don't think that person is saved. But they have a profession. They say, yes, I ask the Lord Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. I ask God the Father to forgive me of my sins and this and that. Now, personally, I might look at that person and say, well, boy, Dan here. <laughs> I don't know folks, you know. <laughs> but, we don't either. But you see, <laughs> but you see, I can't look upon his heart. I'm not God. So I am bound by the word of God on his profession to baptize him. Okay? Now, the water's a little cold out there now. Kind of hard to do. But anyhow. So we don't know if these persons are saved. But we have to go by their profession. Even if if we might not believe it, we still have to go by their profession of faith. Amen? Amen. And those that are not, we go by their profession of the unfaithful. But he shall not multiply to himself horses. Now, obviously this applies today to, to riches today. Nor cause the people to return to Egypt. That means to their sin. To the end that should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, you shall henceforth return no more that way. In other words, don't go back to the old ways before you were saved. Neither shall you multiply to himself wives. That is, you know, by the way, pretty soon, uh, with the way the country is going, it's going to, they're going to start having multiple marriages. From what I understand, they've already started that. You know, in Utah, have for centuries. Yeah, I know they've been doing it there for centuries, but I mean to where it's a common thing. And it shall be when uh, he said upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book, out of which is before the priests and the Levites. Do you understand what he's telling you? That, that these are people now in these days, it says the Bible has been completed, and we have it. And it's not necessary that a man takes a pen in his hand and copies every word, but it is necessary that he reads every word and that he lives every word. And it shall be with him that he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord, to keep all the words of his law, these statutes to do them, that his heart be not lifted up above the brother, and he that not turn aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in the kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Now, uh, I may very well read, uh, for, the, for this coming Tea Party meeting Thursday, Numbers 32, what I read to begin here, in this passage of Scripture to the Tea Party people. Mm -hmm. And boy, will that excite those feminists that are laying low. <laughs> we'll know then. <laughs> but anyhow, I want you to turn over to Mark chapter 4. And in Mark chapter 4, what is the Lord talking about in these passages 21 through 25? He's talking about your faith, your strength, and your rewards are standing in eternity. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? In other words, he's telling you that you are to be very bold with your faith. To be very bold with your faith. I know this fellow who professes to be a Christian, but he, he says that his faith is something very personal stuff. It's not something he wants to share with anybody. Okay? And I told this man, first of all, then you are not functional at all. Because your function as a Christian, number one is the Great Commission. 
Amen. You're a dysfunctioning person. Okay. And this surprised him. Huh. Is it? But I told him where he could find that in the, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither is there anything kept secret, but that it should be come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed that what you hear, with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall be more given. For he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he hath. Now listen, what is he telling you? He's telling you if you're spiritually energized, if if you are truly saved and the Holy Spirit is dwelling within you, then you're going to have a burning, a hunger to serve God. And the more hunger you have to learn the Word of God and to be fruitful, God will give you more. Mm -hmm. the, the faith that you have, He'll increase your faith. Right. He'll increase your courage. You won't have doubts. Amen. You won't have to worry. But if, but if that's not where your heart's at, if your heart's in this world, if your heart's with a television, or the movies, or Hollywood, or whatever the world is out there. If your heart's with football, baseball, you know, if, if your heart is with this world, what little you have, you're going to lose. But take away. You see, once you understand it, he gives each and every one the opportunity to understand that. And then from then on in, and folks, there are no appeals. There's only one Supreme Court. One. That's Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And there will be no appeals. Amen? Amen. Amen. You guys are supposed to say that on your own. Okay? <laughs> right? <laughs> Amen. Turn over Amen. to a very familiar passage of Scripture, and that's in Hosea chapter 4. And then. Have people perish for long yes. now. Yes. Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 through 19. <clears throat> Boy, and this passage of Scripture describes describes the bride of Christ just so well as it would, it would apply, let me say it this, it would apply to the bride of Christ just as it applies to the wife of God. You see, here in Hosea, God is speaking as the nation of Israel as, as his wife. This, this book of Hosea. It's a beautiful poetic book, and it shows you how God is going to deal with the nation as he has dealt with the nation of Israel. And it says, Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Now again, you could change that word to you children of America, it would apply, or Britain, or England, it would apply. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing, now this, this is talking about the general population. God always keeps a remnant. We're the remnant. Praise God. But he's talking about the population. Mm -hmm. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out blood touches blood. That's our judicial system. That's our political system. Correct. That's Hollywood. That's your public education system, all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, when I keep hearing these people, it drives me crazy, saying we've killed 58 million people. The actual number is twice that. The oh, actual yeah. number is twice 58 million. And I just wish they would quit doing that. Mm -hmm. I wish they would, would give the actual <coughs> number. You ask the very same people. Let me ask you this. You ask the very same people and you say, well, do you believe the government? They'll say, of course I don't believe the government. Then why do you keep parrot, parroting the numbers they're giving you? All of those that have come out of the, the, the bloody baby killing industry, everyone I've talked to, everyone will tell you that they only report one out of every two babies they kill. That's standard operating procedure. 